the Amstrad CPC was not only the complete home computer, it was also a great little arcade machine. Yes, in the right hands it could sing and, believe it or not, it could scroll. There were many great arcade conversions for the Amstrad CPC and I thought, you know what? It would be rude not to share the top 25 arcade conversions according to me. Here we go. Number 25, Buggy Boy. And what it lacked in speed, it more than made up for in the graphics, presentation and challenge. Yes, there's no arguing. The Commodore 64 had the definitive 8-bit home conversion. And whilst this was inferior, it was still a great home conversion. But also, it was no pushover. And I wouldn't be surprised if not that many people actually completed it. In the end, it's a tough test of speed and skill. Number 24, Renegade. This 2D screen flipper grabbed and punched you in the gut anytime you went near it. Renegade bombarded you with thugs, end of level bosses and flashing lights. And if you knew how to unlock blood splatter, it all adds up to single player gaming that's as perfect as it could get. Some criticise the control scheme, others the lack of scroll. It probably shouldn't have worked, but it did really, really well. Number 23, Robocop. Robocop took your basic 2D platform shooter and made it so good that everything else simply looked like the work of amateurs. Yes, it's all over within the space of 10 minutes, but so are many other things, and we still go back for more. This was Ocean Software at its arcade gaming peak. And you know what, for once, despite being a movie license and an arse about face arcade conversion, it lived up to the hype, it was worth it. Number 22, Smash TV. I'm still addicted to the arcade original of this, and whilst the Amstrad arcade conversion is no Ric Flair, it's still a worthy contender. It's disappointing that it doesn't feature in-game music, but it definitely rocked in the arcade and also on the humble Amstrad CPC. I'm not sure it became everybody's favorite game, but for me personally, I'm still addicted now. Woo! Number 21, Solomon's Key. My goodness me, I put some hours into this. It's another classic arcade conversion for the Amstrad CPC. Some people play computer games to escape from life, and I don't blame them if it's this good. On a different day, this would be my pick of the lot. In fact, I can't think of a better game to complement your Amstrad CPC. I'm happy I found games over drugs, booze and chicks. Well, for the most part. Number 20, Wet Le Mans. Straight off the bat, I will say that I don't like the graphics. I prefer Mode Zero, but the speed and the detail is fantastic. There's no doubt it's a top racer on the Amstrad CPC, and at the time, blew away the competition. I would say it's still a benchmark racing game on the Amstrad CPC, and what I mean is it looked and played better than, well, everything. Before developers became obsessed with realism, you could pretty much get away with and shoehorn any idea into a video game. And more often than not, the results were spectacular. And the skills required to excel at this game remain a challenge even to this day. The arcade original is still brilliant and the Amstrad CPC is easily the best of the 8-bits. Once you've memorised and mastered, you'll race through a few seconds quicker the next time. Ah, this is not only a great multiplayer game, it was a shooter slash exploration done really well. It's basically gauntlet with weapons of mass destruction. The graphics in this game proved that the Amstrad CPC was more powerful than the sun. But you know what they say, simple is often the best. I've been called a lot worse. This game changed my world a little bit, well my Amstrad world. Who else liked it? Space Harrier is one of my highlights of owning an Amstrad CPC. It required ultra-fast reflexes to navigate your way through, 
and it was a real tough test of speed and skill. Every time I went near it, it grabbed and cuddled me. It bombarded you with bosses and flashing lights, and it kept me coming back for more. Space Harrier gave early gamers such as me a look into the possible future of pseudo 3D worlds. Number 16, Mr. Heli. Hard, creative, and brilliant. Proof the Amstrad CPC had it all. It felt like a perfect copy of the coiner. Bright, fast, loud, and as thrilling as an adrenaline shot in your eyeball. In fact, Mr. Heli is just as desirable now, and it rocked the Amstrad CPC just as much as it did the arcades. Still a joy today? Brilliant. Number 15, Operation Wolf. Long before Medal of Honor stormed the beaches of Normandy, we had Operation Wolf to suck you in and spit you out. It was just like being there. The only thing missing was the zombie dogs of Call of Duty. And if you were lucky enough to own the Amstrad CPC conversion, you ended up with a game that would eat up months of your life. Oh, and this game definitely wouldn't have helped with your homework. Number 14, P47. Probably the Amstrad's finest 2D shooting hour. You got huge power-ups, fantastic weapons, and beautifully constructed levels. Such a shame then that it didn't have the arcade music, but what it did have is fast action and fabulous graphics. I believe this is an absolute must for the Amstrad CPC, so if you haven't played it, put this one on your list. Unlucky for some, number 13, Escape from the Planet of Robot Monsters. Probably the longest title for a game ever, but this is some fantastic isometric stuff. It's a massive platform adventure, and I'm still addicted to this one today. This is like Gauntlet with a sci-fi edge. They've packed in lots of fast sprites, glorious backgrounds, and a tight difficulty curve. I tried it again the other day, and it was still good. Number 12, Commando. Ah, oh, great memories. One of the old run and gun classic shooters, packed with five levels, Fantastic music, guns, violence, it had everything together in one place. For me, it's up there with the coin-up original. Everyone must play, scrap that, everyone must complete Commander. It shows that you can tolerate insane difficulty and triumph in the face of overwhelming odds. Commando is a masterclass in gaming. Number 11, Gryzor. It'll never work. 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 And neither will this video. <clears throat> Number 10, Gauntlet 2. But I'd like to give a big shout to the original as well. But this was more of the same stuff. Bigger, badder, uh, more detail. And it's the perfect two-player game as well. That'll last until you die of old age. So this second visit to the world of Gauntlet is the best by far. Um, back in the day, everyone was at it. Including your dad. Oh god, absolutely love this game. Number 9, Continental Circus. I'd say this is Amstrad's top racer and it blew away the competition. For me, it's still the benchmark of driving games for the Amstrad CPC. And it spared us the dull Mode 1 graphics of Wet Le Mans. Here, we got Mode 0. And get this, it's not just brilliant, it's the best of the 8-bit arcade conversions. All that's missing is a flappy paddle and a steering wheel. Number 8, Bomb Jack. A fast and brilliant arcade conversion to the Amstrad CPC. It was a game that hooked a generation. And I'm told that it's sold by the bucket load on the 8-bits. And the skills required to excel at this game 
remain a challenge to this day. And as with the arcade original, it still drags you back to replay it year after glorious year. So the easiest game you'll ever play, but difficult to master. Number 7, Arkanoid, Revenge of Doe. This and the original took the slow-paced pedestrian Pong and threw it all out of the window. Now we had speed, dexterity and complexity all rolled up into one. The levels were there to annoy, flummox and trick you. And just when you've pulled out your last strand of hair, you progress to the next level and it's game on all over again. The frustrations were so high, the screams could be heard on the moons of Jupiter. Number six, Afterburner. Now, I love the arcade original. I beg, steal, and borrow to own the arcade original cabinet. And um, back in the day as a kid, this for me was as close to the arcade original. I mean, it was a dream come true. I didn't know Amstrad games could run this fast. It's an experience that will always stay with me. And it's the reason why I've downloaded it on almost every console it's been re-released on. Number 5, Ye Are Kung Fu. Now there's a bit of a backstory behind this for me. I saw it running in Dixon's on a Commodore 64. And then later saw it running on the Amstrad CPC. And I fell head over heels in love with it. So from that moment on, I wanted an Amstrad CPC. Just on the strength of this game, had I have seen Green Beret, I probably would have gone for a Commodore 64 instead. Number four, Rainbow Islands. Not just one of the best arcade games of all time, also one of the best Amstrad arcade conversions. I've played it on many systems, many arcade conversions over the years, but I still love this, I still go back to it. It sometimes feels like the music has slowed down and the sprite occasionally flickers, but the game design is majestic and no matter what they would have done to this game, whether it would have been a specy port or they'd have stripped it from music, it still would have played brilliantly. Number three, Donkey Kong. Who would have thought a Shigeru Miyamoto game on the Amstrad CPC? And this is a legendary arcade conversion to the Amstrad. In the early 1980s, Donkey Kong was the game to test out on your Atari 2600 or ColecoVision console. I've got no idea how Ocean got the license for this or why they thought it would be a good idea to release it in 1987. Number two, Chase HQ. Just look at it and marvel at it. Just for a few seconds. Look at the colors used on an 8-bit computer. A computer that came out in 1984. Chase HQ on the Amstrad CPC is not only a masterful conversion, I think it's up there with the ZX Spectrum conversion, if not better. I remember staying up so late to play this game and being zombie-like at school the next day. Number one, Ikari Warriors. It would have been rude not to have had this at number one. And I'm sorry to all those games that I couldn't cram into the list. I wanted to find a space for Super Off-Road, the Teenage Hero Mutant Turtles game, the arcade coiner, Shadow Dancer, that was a good one. And it feels criminal to leave out Bad Dudes vs Dragon Ninja. That was brilliant. So we've come to the end. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please like, subscribe, comment. And if you're feeling especially generous, give us a thanks.